Welcome to the Chem Doctor, and uh, this presentation uh, is directed at, at teaching the viewer about uh, the determination of the formula of magnesium oxide by what's called a gravimetric analysis. Um, now, the gravimetric analysis of magnesium oxide is a really common laboratory in the first semester of uh, general chemistry, in particular uh, when you're dealing with uh, the material out of chapter, usually it's around chapter three or four where, where uh, you're introduced to chemical formulas and chemical equations uh, and so on. And, uh, and this is a typical laboratory uh, in a high school setting uh, chemistry class or an advanced placement uh, chemistry class. So the first thing I want to address is uh, to talk about the term gravimetric. So this is a gravimetric analysis. And uh, what does that mean exactly? So a gravimetric analysis is the determination of a chemical formula by differences in mass. And you know, I think I should probably define that in words. So it is the determination determination of a chemical formula by differences in mass. All right. Now, differences in mass, what does that mean exactly? Uh, and, you know, here we go again in chemistry, right? There's always, we define one thing with a complex definition uh, using using something else that's uh, fairly uh, abstract. So differences in mass. All right. So here's here's how this experiment works. Um, we're going to take a, a piece of magnesium metal, and magnesium metal is, is a shiny metal that usually comes in strips. All right. So we're going to have. Let's see here. We're going to have this strip of magnesium metal. All right. I'm going to do it this way, and uh, this magnesium metal is going to be placed in, uh, in into a crucible, all right? So this is going to be this is going to be my magnesium metal, all right? And then we're going to have, in terms of how the laboratory works, we're going to have this crucible and a lid, all right? And the crucible is this little um, ceramic uh, chamber along with its lid. All right, and this is called the crucible. And <clears throat> this being the lid, I better put a label on it. And what we're going to do at the beginning of this experiment is we're going to mass all of this stuff uh, individually and then together. So we're going to take and mass the crucible plus its lid. And quite simply by just putting it on a scale, all right? And when we do that, and this was from an actual experiment I did, we're going to get 24.10 grams for the mass of the lid and the crucible together. And then what we do is we take this magnesium strip uh, that you get from your instructor or from the professor. And that's added into the crucible. Now, technically speaking, this strip of magnesium is actually, uh, you know, somewhere probably between 10 to 20 centimeters in length. And what you may want to do is roll this up on like a pencil or a pen, but, but don't make the roll very tight. All you want to do is get this thing rolled up so it'll fit into the crucible, but you don't want the roll tight because the metal needs to be exposed to the air. And and if you if you compress this thing up in, into a really tight mass of, of rolled up metal and put it in here, then when we go when we carry out the chemical reaction between magnesium and oxide, um, the reaction is not going to go very well. So um, but we'll add the magnesium to the crucible and then we're going to mass again only this time we're going to have the mass of the crucible 
the lead and the magnesium metal together. This is where this idea of um, differences in mass comes, comes into play. So now my new mass with all three items is 24.23 grams. Now when I say that we're, we're a gravimetric mass is determination of a, of a chemical formula by differences in mass, you can see right now if you look at these two values, if we take the difference in mass between them, we're, gonna, we're going to actually get the mass of the magnesium. Now, how does this experiment work exactly? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, magnesium, all right, and it's placed inside this crucible. So let's draw a picture of it over here. And in this drawing, what I'm going to do is have the lid on the crucible, and inside I'm going to have my magnesium metal. And again, I'm going to label it. magnesium metal, all right, and actually, to be more correct about it, my lid is going to be um, cracked open uh, a bit. So, because you're going to need, this this thing's going to need access to the air is the point. Because what's going to happen is we're, we're going to um, basically submit the crucible and what's inside it, the magnesium, to a flame. The purpose of the flame is to provide initiation energy for a chemical reaction between the magnesium and oxygen. All right, which I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll finish over here. So it's going to be magnesium plus elemental oxygen. And it is going to be producing magnesium oxide. Now, you'll notice in this that I'm giving you the punchline before we've even run the experiment. I mean, it's likely in your lab that the uh, professor or the teacher will probably try to, to keep the formula obscure to you because the whole point of this is to find this formula. Um, we need to balance this equation. So there's going to be a 2 here, and then we're going to need a 2 here. But what I think is important here is for you to understand from the get-go what it is we're trying to do. So we're trying to actually find the chemical formula of this. And the way that we're going to do that is by carrying out a chemical reaction between the magnesium metal and oxygen, which is in the air. So what's going to happen as the crucible, the magnesium in the lid heat up, is eventually we're going to hit the point where uh, there's enough initiation energy, enough thermal energy uh, in, with the magnesium metal and the presence of oxygen to get the reaction going. Now, this reaction is highly exothermic. I'm going to go ahead and write that in here. So once the reaction starts, it essentially is going to go on its own, and uh, it's going to release uh, energy. All right, and the energy that's released is going to be uh, in two types. It's going to be thermal, and what that means is that the temperature is going to rise in a big way. All right, and B, uh, there's going to be a lot of light that's released. So when this reaction goes, you want to be really careful about staring at the metal because it gets extremely bright, extremely bright. So if you are looking inside the crucible but it, where, where the lid is cracked open um, uh, to watch the experiment, be really careful once this thing goes to, uh, to look away uh, and not stare at it because uh, you know, you're going to end up with blue spots, spots in your eyes and technically speaking I suppose it could hurt your retina so you shouldn't be, once this thing goes just just look away. Now how is this thing working? Alright we took the mass of the crucible and the lid and we recorded it in our notebook. Then we remassed the crucible and the, and the lid with the magnesium metal that was provided by the experiment and we got a new mass the new mass is increased from the mass of the crucible and lid, which should make sense to you because we've added the metal. So if we take the difference in mass of these two values, we get the magnesium. Now we go ahead and we carry out the chemical reaction. And in the chemical reaction, you can clearly see that oxygen is combined with the magnesium to form magnesium oxide. 
And because we're adding oxygen to the magnesium, then we should also, in the third step here, see another, uh, see another increase in mass. And, uh, and indeed, when we look at, uh, when we uh, recalculate after cooling the, uh, the crucible down, and I'm just going to abbreviate this now, the C and the L and the new compound, MgO, our new mass is uh, 24.32 grams. So now we have three masses here. And we can now use the difference in masses to calculate uh, essentially the formula of the MgO. So this is how this is going to work. First, we're going to find the mass of just the magnesium. So that's going to be 24.23 minus 24.10 grams. And the mass of the magnesium uh, is going to be uh, 0 0.13 uh, grams. All right, and then we're going to need the mass. So now we're going to find the mass of the MgO. All right, so MgO. So this is going to be um, uh, 24.32. Sorry about the glitch there. I was uh, I was looking at a number here, and and uh, my dyslexia made me switch it. So anyway, I'm back on track here. So we've got 24.32 grams, and now we're going to subtract that from the mass. Of the crucible and um, and what we're going to get for um, the mass of the MgO is going to be 0 0.22 grams. This is MgO and this is Mg. Now and a lot of times where students mess up is they don't realize in order to find the uh, the chemical formula here we need the mass of the oxygen that was added to the magnesium. So what we're going to do is take the difference. No, So this is where uh, this business with differences of mass comes into play now. So to find the, the mass of the oxygen, all right, what we need to do is take the difference of the MgO, 0.22 grams, minus the mass of the magnesium. And uh, obviously, we're assuming here that the reaction went to completion, which actually can be um, one of the complications of this um, experiment, but I don't want to get lost in the details here with that because what I'm trying to do is to teach you how to figure this thing out. So what we get for the mass of the oxygen is going to be 0 0.09 grams of oxygen. So now we have the oxygen and we have our magnesium. So to find the formula now, we need to find the moles of the magnesium and the moles of the, of the oxygen. So moles of Mg are going to be 0 0.13 grams of magnesium times one mole over the molar mass, which is going to be 24.31 grams. And so for the moles of the magnesium, we get about 0 0.005 Three, four, seven. I'm carrying my numbers out, and this is moles of mg. All right, and then the, for the moles of the O, we're going to have 0 0.09 grams times one mole over 16 grams of O. So our moles of O are going to be. 0 0.005 and then on this one I got 625 mole of O. So the, the two numbers are not exactly equal. Don't expect that. When you do this for real it, it's not going to work out that way. So now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take a ratio of these two values to find the relationship between the MG and the O. So the ratio, and, and what I'm going to do since this number is a little bit bigger, is I'm going to take the ratio of the O to the Mg. So we're going to go O to Mg 
And when we take that ratio and divide those numbers, I'm going to get 1.0529. 1 and you can see that that ratio is essentially approximately equal to 1. It's actually pretty close. So what this tells us is that in the ratio of or in the chemical formula of MgO, the ratio of Mg to O or O to Mg is going to be 1 to 1. And therefore, we would argue that the uh, chemical formula is MgO. And this is how using a gravimetric analysis, which which is determination of a chemical formula by differences in mass, that we're actually able to determine the chemical formula of a chemical compound. Okay, and what I, I, what I like to do now is thank the viewer for watching Chem Doctor and uh, realize that there are more videos at www.chemdoctor.org. Thanks for viewing and uh, hope you come back.